afraid. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. The Lord has been good to you. Go ahead and tell him thank you. We go ahead and tell him thank you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, our God is worthy. Thank you, choir. Thank you, Mr. Winston. We thank you for lifting up your voices in the house of the Lord. I'm not going to be before you long this morning, but in the spirit of uh, Thanksgiving, in the spirit of getting into the holiday spirit, I said last week that we would be uh, dealing with a series on gratefulness and Thanksgiving. Last Sunday, we dealt with the ten leopards and how that one man came back even after God had blessed them. He had come back and he thanked the Lord for what the Lord has done for him. And I don't know about you this morning, but if the Lord has done anything for you, all week long, you ought to tell him thank you. Somebody's name was called this morning, but they couldn't respond. But here we are again in the house of the Lord just one more time. And for that, we ought to say thank you. If you have your Bibles, I would that you would go with me to the book of Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, uh, the 16th, 17th, and the 18th verses. First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, the 16th, the 17th, and the 18th verse. And Paul admonishes uh, the believers, the saints, with these words. Rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. This is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. I like to preach for the few moments of the mind from the sermonic thing. In all things, give thanks. Let us pray. Father God, even right now, we know that you're God. There's no God beside you, and we say thank you. We thank you, God, that you didn't have to do it, but you did it. You, you died on Calvary that we might have a right to eternal life. Oh, God said, worn down that you might be lifted up, glorified, and magnified. And after all is said and done, let somebody be touched, healed, set free, and delivered by your word. This is your servant's prayer. Amen. Somebody. Paul, Paul, the apostle. Uh, Paul, the writer of two-thirds of the New Testament. Paul, who was called of the Lord on his way to persecute the saints. Paul, who has had this encounter with the Lord, now is in the last stages of his life. The Apostle Paul, uh, the the speaker of and for the Gentiles. This Paul was arrested in Philippi. He writes a letter to the Philippian church saying, in all things rejoice. They get, he gets released and uh, a few months later, he writes a letter to the saints at the city of Thessalonica, the Thessalonians, who lived in almost a Las Vegas type city. A city where all kinds of ideas and philosophies and ways of life were placed over the church. And the church had been under oppression from the Roman government. They have been under oppression and the pressure of the neighbors in their communities. And Paul writes this letter 
or this trilogy of instructions to give them hope. He says, rejoice always. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. He's telling the saints of God, even though you're going through, and even though you are being attacked on all sides, give thanks. Rejoice always. Why, 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 why rejoice? Why, why, why rejoice? Why rejoice? Why, why rejoice while you're going through? We, Paul is trying to tell us we rejoice because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it. This joy that I have, the world can't take it away. It is the joy of your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you have ever had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, then there ought to have a level of, we all should have a level of joy down in our souls. Happiness is temporary. Yes, it is. Happiness is a fleeting moment. Some people you just can't make happy. Don't care what you do, how you do it, it's never enough to make them happy. And I surmise, and I, I submit to you this morning that, that if you don't already have your own happiness within yourself, can't nobody make you happy. And if you are in a relationship, a situation, a circumstance where you are made to make folk happy all the time, that means that you will be serving that folk, all that person, all of your life. Paul, Paul, Paul says, Paul says you ought to have some happiness within yourself. But, but, but not only you ought to have happiness in yourself, you ought to have the joy of the Lord. Amen, somebody. Because every day is not going to be Sunday. Every day we, we wind up going through situations. But we ought to still have, even in the midst of those situations, joy of the Lord. I heard somebody say, the joy of the Lord is mine. My strength. I, I don't know what your strength is, but, but the, Lord, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Paul, Paul, he, he give this instruction because in the Thessalonian church, there are a bunch of scholars who have institutions around the church. And these scholars are pulling at the people in the community to the point where people begin to take sides over the church and the word of God to these outside believers. Paul says, listen, there's nobody like the blood-washed Christians who follow Jesus Christ. You don't care how rich people are and, 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 and what their sayings are and how prominent they are. Nobody died on Calvary for you and I but the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't let the influence of the outsiders make you lose your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. There were people called the Epicureans. They were philosophers. They were the ones where you get this terminology, eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow you die. Shakespeare picked that up in the 15th century, but the Epicureans in the time of Jesus were the ones who had this kind of philosophy. And, and Paul says, no, that's, 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 not what you want to, that's not what you want to follow. 
And then they had these people called the Stoics who looked at the natural static uh, relationship between God and man and uh, surmised that uh, God wasn't as, and as powerful as uh, he professed to be because of their present situations to make them lose their faith in the Lord. Then there were the people called the Platonists who followed Plato. Plato who, uh, who, who had this philosophy uh, that anything and everything goes. That, that, that at the end of Plato's death, although we study Plato, Socrates, the Epicureans, uh, you have to study that in college, you have to study that in some English literary works of that day, they weren't saved. They made Plato drink poison from the very cup that he served to his followers. And Jesus, I'm pardon me, and Paul is saying, you are the followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And in the following of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is only one thing you need to understand, and that is God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that he that believeth in him shall not perish, but have the guarantee ever lasting life. When folk were losing their lives during the time of Paul, this was Paul's instruction to the believers. He said, rejoice always. And I don't know about you, but, but, but in my life growing up and in my journey in life, I have been made to find joy out of sorrow. Amen, somebody. And I know I'm not by myself. Amen, somebody. But what that did was it built our spirit to be able to withstand the ways of the devil. Amen, somebody. Paul says rejoice that, that there is nothing like the, re the relationship of the Lord Jesus Christ. That when you think about what he did that nobody else did, when you think about the fact that he, that they, that they, that they bang nails in his hands and bang nails in his feet and place them on an old rugged, rugged cross and they placed them in Calvary's cross and there he still said, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. There ought to be a joy in our soul that, that, that if Jesus can go through the hardship, amen somebody, and still have a kind word, you ought to have joy. But not only, but, but secondly, he says, he says, pray without ceasing. Joy, the first instruction he gives us, rejoice always, is a continuum to the next verse that says, pray without ceasing. That God, Paula, is telling us, Daryl, that, that there ought to be a certain level of spiritual maturity for those of us who've been walking with the Lord as long as we've been walking with him. That, 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 that there ought to be a praise in your mouth. And that there ought to be, always ought to be a, a time when you never have fear to pray. Amen, somebody. Now, now this text right here, Miss Sir, he's not saying pray. Now I lay me down to sleep for the Lord of my soul to keep. And constantly, right? What he's saying is, is that whenever a situation comes up, that you ought to be ready to pray. It's almost like a cough. You have a cough, you have a, it's, it's almost like, prayer is almost like an intermittent cough. And that is, you're not coughing Back to back, back to back, back to back. But you have a cough 
that's an that's a intermittent cough that's in the back of your throat, that there is a possibility that whatever comes through your nasal passage, you can clear it through a cough. Paul is saying that whenever you go through your situation in life, you ought to have something in the back of your throat. You ought to have something that, amen, that at any time when something comes up against you, amen, you ought to be able to pray and have a hallelujah for not only what the Lord is doing, but what the Lord has brought you and I through. Amen, somebody. That 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 this 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 cough, if you will, is a cough that says that any time there are some particles, there are some spirits that enter into your nasal passage, that 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 descend down to your the back of your throat. Uh, that God gives you the power, the internal power, to cough. And I stopped by this morning to tell somebody, I don't care what you're going through, how you've been, what you've been through, uh, God gives us the power to pray. He gives not only the power to pray, but the power to praise. Amen, somebody. God, I thank you not for having cancer, but for healing me of the cancer. Amen, somebody. God, I thank you for opening my eyes in a situation that I could not see it, but when I got in it, after I got in it, you allowed me out of it. Amen, somebody. And now I see the error of my own ways. God got to let you go do some stuff in order for you to step back to say thank you. Amen, somebody. And it's so unfortunate, especially in the body of Christ, that there are so many people who will not thank God for what the Lord has done for them. That Paul would have to write 2,000 years ago, uh, rejoice in the Lord always. Pray, amen, always. But not only to rejoice always and to praise always without ceasing, he says, in everything, everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ for you and for me. He, 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 he's not, it's not a matter of thanking for the hardship. It's thanking that you gave us the strength to endure the hardship. Give thanks, God. It could have been me. Amen, somebody. But you saw past my sin and you saw my knees. And God, that accident could have been me, but you, you took the wheel. And for that, God, I say thank you. God, I could have been unemployed, God, but out of the 2,000 employees that were laid off at the factory, you kept a few of us. I want to say thank you. God, I don't know what your situation is, but the Lord is saying, however he brought you through, in this season of thankfulness, amen, you got to thank him because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for ourselves. Thankfulness is the gratitude of what the Lord has done for us. But the opposite of thankfulness is complaining. And, and, and some of us complain with two loaves of bread under our arms. Some of us, some of us things, and I don't care how much you do, how well you do it, it's still not enough. Amen, somebody. But, the, but Paul's saying, be thankful. Because where you may think you have it bad, somebody else have it worse. Be thankful because you got a roof over your head. 
Be thankful because you got shoes on your feet. Be thankful for you got food on your table. Be thankful you got clothes on your back. Be thankful that you, God has given you a peace that passes all understanding. Be thankful that he kept your mind and kept my mind. Be thank, good God Almighty, thank you that no hurt, harm, or danger came to us not only in the midnight hour, but all week long. Be thankful. We pray because God wants us to pray to him and God hears our prayer. But we're thankful because without him, we couldn't do it without him. When you look in the text here, here in the Old Testament, a people of God were an ungrateful people called the Israelites. That when God brought them out of Egypt, he brought them through the Red Sea. Pharaoh's army it's upon them. They open up the red. God opens up the Red Sea, and 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 in the back of the Red Sea, He closes it up on Pharaoh's soldiers. Their bodies flush up against the seashore, and yet God does this out of love, and yet they still complain. He loved them so much that he didn't let their feet get wet. Their shoes fall apart. They still complain. They complain, God, we, we don't have anything to eat. And God sent them manna, bread from heaven. And they still complain. They, they said, bro, God, you, you gave us bread, but you didn't give us any meat. And he wind up uh, sending them quail. So much quail that they got tired of eating quail. They still miss nearly complain. Turn around and said, we don't have anything to drink. God tell Moses, Moses, speak to the rock. And fresh water came from the rock. For 40 years, girl, their clothes never got ragged or wore out. And yet, they complained. And in the light of this political uh, hotbed that we deal with every day, uh, I, 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 I surmise that but we have those Israelites among us. That although the Lord has brought us from a mighty long way, we still complain anyway. He's brought us through Bull Connor. He's brought us through those police who put hoses on us here. Six German shepherds on us. We, he brought us through Jim Crow and segregation. He, he brought us through some of the worst presidents. He brought us through the stock market crash. He brought us from a mighty long way. And yet, we still complain. But I stopped by this morning to tell somebody. Rejoice, I say rejoice, because the Lord didn't have to do it, but he did it. He allowed our golden moments to roll on. Amen, somebody, pray, and don't stop praying, because prayer is a direct pipeline to God, and, and although you may think that he don't hear your prayers, I believe what my grandmama said, he may not come when you want him, but the Lord is, come on, somebody, He's always on, come on somebody, on time. And I don't know about you, but if you would just go with me, uh, when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah for, for saving me. I'm thankful, God, for all that you've done. I'm thankful that you're a bridge over troubled water. I'm thankful, God, that you open doors that men have closed. I'm thank you, God, that you've given me joy out of sorrow. I thank you, God. Come on, somebody. What has the Lord thanked you for? What has the Lord blessed you for that you can thank him in this spirit of 
Thanksgiving, going into the holidays, we want to be thankful. We want to be mindful that all we have comes from the Lord. And we're not doing the Lord a favor. Come on, somebody. But, 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 he requires of us to rejoice and to give him praise. It's mandatory. I got a, I, on my, on my, on my grandmother's side, I got, last year, I had an aunt, she passed at 101. I got an aunt right now that I talked to this morning that's 98, soon to be 99 this week. And when I talked to her this morning, the first thing she said was, he woke me up this morning. And it hit me. We take life for granted where folk are leaving us as quick as we blink our eyes. Seemed like when I just took off my, my robe and took off my, my, my black suit and, my, and you, you took off your black dress, it seemed that you gotta put it back on again and again and again because time is filled with swift transition. And we got to hold to God's unchanging hand because no man knows, no woman knows, nobody knows the hour or the time in which the Lord shall come and call our name. That's what Paul is saying. Paul is saying in Thessalonians, man, the Lord is coming. And the Lord is coming back. And when the Lord comes back, I want to be ready when he comes. But when he comes back, no man knows the hour or the time. But he says, as Miss Kerr read this morning, when you see these things, when you see blood up to the horse's bridle, meaning that blood, violence running in the street, when you see tornadoes, when you see, when you see envy and jealousy, when you see murder, when you see mother against daughter and daughter against mother and father against son know that they are their own worst enemies know that families are falling apart and and fracturized and 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 and, and when you see all these things know that the time is near paul is saying because the time is near rejoice always Pray always and be thankful always. Always abounding in the Lord. Because the Lord is on his way. And I don't know about you, but I'm thankful. I said I'm thankful. In all that the Lord allows me to do. We cannot take life for granted, but we have to follow the instructions of what the Apostle Paul said, for this is the sign of spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity is not that when I hit a brick wall, I don't want to live no more. That's not spiritual maturity. Because now what you've done is that you have left Christ out of the center of your life. Amen, somebody. Whatever your hardship is, whether it's a layoff, whether it's a divorce, whether it's a foreclosure, whatever that is, it's still not enough for you not to rejoice, not to thank God for where you are. Because listen, if you lose it, you can get it again. And I don't know about you, but I've lost some things in this life. Amen, somebody. And I've gained some things in this life, and it didn't come from God. But the things that the Lord has blessed me with, 
I can hold on to. Some things the Lord don't give you. I got a friend right now call me and say, Warren, I need you to hide my car. I'm behind on my payments. And he's the main one holler, the Lord this and the Lord that, the Lord this. The Lord gave me this car. Well, if the Lord gave you the car, you wouldn't have to hide your car. Amen, somebody. When the Lord give you a blessing, listen, listen to me. When the Lord give you a blessing, it's a blessing. You ain't got, you can go to bed, come on somebody. You can go to bed at night and not worry about it. Amen, somebody. What we want up doing is we want God to bless our mess and put his name on it. That's what we do. We do some stuff that God ain't got nothing to do with and we say God did it. But then when it falls apart and when we got to hide our car, we realize God wasn't in it. Yeah, no, no, no. In all things, what we do, we rejoice, we pray, and we give thanksgiving. Somebody in this Thanksgiving season may not have a meal. Somebody in this Thanksgiving season may only get a chance to eat this Thanksgiving season. Somebody right now, we pray God that's under a bridge, in a bandominium, a vacant house, bound by the chains of addiction, bound by hunger, bound by mental illness. God, we ask that you, that you, that you come by there and you, and you heal them, God. Yeah, God, we ask that you, you be God all by yourself, God, and transform that, that situation. We bless y'all. We bless, we may not have what we want to have, but we have what we need. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. I, all of us would like to have more than what we, but, 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 but I like what God, God gives us what we need and not what we want. Amen, somebody. Because imagine if he gave us what we really needed. Boy, boy. Imagine if God in his anger gave us what he wanted us to have. But his grace, I said his grace, his mercy is sufficient. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. In all things, rejoice, pray, and be thankful. God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. Amen, somebody.